You're watching the Intel Network Builders vSummit series. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content at Telecom TV. Dish Network has announced a collaboration with Intel to deliver a pioneering cloud-native ORAN-based 5G network with Palo Alto Networks announced as its security provider. And joining me now to discuss Dish's strategy for protecting data, lessons learned during implementation, and what advancements in security are being developed to stay ahead of the evolving threat landscape are Henry Yu, Director of Network Security and Architecture at Dish Network, and Bob Gaffari, General Manager of Enterprise and Cloud Network Division, Network and Edge Group at Intel. Hello, both of you. Thanks so much for taking part in this V Summit. Bob, I'd like to first ask you, what emerging security trends and issues are you seeing in telecoms networks, especially given the evolution towards cloud native architectures? So with uh, the whole evolution of 5G becoming, you know, one of the key technologies to be able to go and enable interesting use usage models for the edge, we're starting to see an increased threat uh, vector uh, and attack services um, as it relates to that edge. And so with that, what this really means is that um, a lot of the comm service providers need to think about how they build their core infrastructure, their edge infrastructure, and how they need to account for this increased um, attack service and make sure that they are able to address this in a way that is much more secure than what may have been in the past. Thanks, Bob. Henry, can you tell me about Dish's business vision for a greenfield cloud-native ORAN 5G network? Yeah, it's, it's very exciting times for Dish. Um, we're in a time where there's a convergence of many things. There's a convergence of ORAN coming to a certain level of maturity. There is a convergence of the 5G technology. And then there's a convergence of uh, the cloud. So with those three convergences um, and the convergence of our spectrum and buying that, it gives DISH the ability to come together and do some amazing things. For example, with ORAN, there is this convergence of community, a community adoption and a community driven and a community hardened architecture for 5G. This allows us to free ourselves from being restricted to one vendor to do one things, but have many vendors do many things. This can help drive down costs. It can also increase innovation and adoption for vendors. Um, the other thing that it allows us to do is because we actually are not encumbered because it's a greenfield, uh, a greenfield deployment. With the greenfield deployment, what that means is we can actually build from scratch. Building from scratch allows us to pick the best of breed vendors. It allows us to select the best architectures. And it also allows us to look at the best cost optimizations. So, so with that, the other piece of that was the cloud native and the adoption of the cloud. As we move forward and, and are able to adopt within the cloud, we're able to do things like drive things at the speed of machines. We're able to, to virtualize things. And that is a part of kind of the ORAN standard is to take a big kind of complex solution and break it into kind of um, NFs, right? Uh, virtual network functions. And with these broken down to smaller parts, you're able to do things with compute and with the cloud, like process things closer to the edge for the efficiency of the customer. Henry, it's a really exciting plan. So how does security fit into this vision? What's your service strategy to protect networks, enterprises, and end users? So there's several key concepts that we do at DISH in order to validate security. The first one is zero trust. That is the concept of not having trust as you talk between domains. The other one is uh, security by design. And within that, we start security early from the design phase, from the paper phase, all the way till the implementation phase. So things have really shifted left in that model. 
you don't have that model with the prior 4G LTE because it just wasn't thought of. They were designed first and let's retrofit security. And then the last one for that is defense in depth. Now with defense in depth, what you're looking at doing is to have multiple layers of security. So it's not just a single wall, but think of having multiple walls, multiple barriers, multiple cameras, multiple alerts, multiple different things that you can do. We have defense in depth at every layer from a security standpoint, and we have reporting and logging at every layer. This is uh, due to the new technologies that have been come up and some of our key partners that we have. And Henry, DISH published a white paper on 5G security recently. Can you tell us more about that? DISH published a white paper in April of 2021. The white paper that was published was actually a white paper talking about the security posture for DISH for the new network that is getting built. It looks at things like the retrofitted 4G network versus a 5G network and the differentiators that DISH is going to come out with. A lot of things that could be could not be done prior because of the retrofitted legacy debt from a 4G network and what we're looking at doing in the 5G network and the high level security concepts that we would be applying to this network as we build it. And Bob, given what we've just heard from Henry, what are you doing at Intel to address security concerns? So Intel um, has been working on security for quite a while. And, uh, you know, we, there's uh, quite a few technologies that we bring to help um, our partners like Palo Alto Networks to deliver, you know, these really great uh, secure solutions. Now, if you take a look at, um, for example, something like uh, Intel's uh, Software Guard extensions or SGX, this is something that Intel brought into the market many, many years ago. And... This was really battle-tested um, technology that really helps reduce the attack services. And uh, most recently, we brought this into our data center and edge uh, kind of environments. And so, you know, with this, uh, you know, confidential compute is now uh, a reality, and you can do this much more securely. And Intel is really part of this whole confidential computing uh, consortium which is really part of the Linux foundation where many of the experts can rally around working to deliver some really great secure solutions. So that was one thing. And then then you look at uh, the importance of encryption and decryption, especially as you're starting to go through these end-to-end kind of environments. And um, aside from the kinds of things we've done with our um, instruction set architectures and the Uh, the supports we have for the different crypto algorithms. We accelerate this as well with things like Intel uh, QAT technology or quick assist technology to be able to really drive multiple folds of performance uh, for these um, applications. Now, um, what we did is um, recently in the Hot Chips Conference and the Intel Architecture Day, we announced uh, our fourth generation QAT technology uh, with our latest uh, Xeon scalable processors. And so this is quite exciting. And then when you couple this with how we work with um, our various partners, including, for example, the likes of Palo Alto Networks, this is just so awesome to see when you're able to deliver this great solution, in this case from Palo Alto, on Intel Xeon scalable architectures. Great. Thanks for that, Bob. And, and Henry, um... As we've heard from Bob, you know, working with with partners is so important. How do you see this security ecosystem evolving over time, you know, especially as the cloud native environment is gaining commercial traction? Yeah, working with partners are very, very important. We have some really great partners such as Intel and Palo Alto. Um, when you work with these partners, what you need to do is have a true partnership and a partnership that surrounds itself around innovation. With 5G, we're doing stuff and laying down some of the new groundwork for the future and we're doing stuff that has not been done before. So that's that makes it very important to have key partners in the mix so that we can quickly evolve and, and quickly evolve an enterprise grade solution for our customers. Thank you, Henry. And finally, Bob, what is Intel doing to stay ahead of the game here? So we're uh, really uh, committed to work with the different uh, operators and a lot of the um, 
key uh, partners in our um, ecosystem, uh, partners such as Palo Alto Networks, to really meet this evolving needs of how security needs to be delivered and delivered in a really important and um, secure way. Um, Intel is very involved in, in a lot of the technical standards um, and a lot of the open source uh, communities. Uh, so things from ranging from confidential compute consortium to open SSL and, uh, you know, and a variety of different other forums from the Linux Foundation and others. And um, so just really just focus on, you know, um, how we do this, working with our partners, being involved with the National Institute of Cybersecurity, um, and, and, and then ultimately bringing together the building blocks that we have, not only from, you know, a silicon standpoint, but a lot of the software building blocks that we bring into um, the industry and making sure that uh, not only are they secure by design, but they're able to also provide the right capabilities to make sure that these networks, these 5G enabled networks can be as secure as possible. That's reassuring to hear. Bob and Henry, thank you both very much indeed for participating today and sharing your views with us. And don't forget to watch the other programmes in this Intel Network Builders vSummit series. For our security coverage, we've got a panel discussion with Palo Alto Networks on enterprise-grade security for service provider networks. And we're also joined by Dell Technologies as we take a closer look at the work of the National Cybersecurity Center of Excellence, which is an ecosystem partnership to keep 5G networks safe. As well as security though, this series also takes a detailed look at VRAN, Edge and the network core. Plenty to see and watch there. For now though, thank you and goodbye.